Hey guys, welcome to Road Rage. This is episode two, my name is Dave, and I'm headed east. Now I was able to lay down a little bit of video yesterday on the basics. The stuff that you're gonna need if you decide to do a DIY motion simulator. Now this is sort of like uh, just the, to, to get you started, uh, you can order some of the parts and, and just kind of get your head around what's gonna be going on with the wiring. So you do have to wire the stuff up. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in the next actual series of videos I do. We did have a really good Saturday uh, racing with the ACF guys. And we were racing the Mini at Silverstone. And I mean, gosh, that was fun. I had a, it's a nice wide track. We were on the, the shorter type track. We weren't on the, the long GP track. I came in, I think, ninth the first race and uh, I think the sixth the second race but uh, yeah man what a freaking great time I was pulling 112s I just couldn't hang with the guys that are doing 110s once again the links are in the description and if you want to join us um, just hit that discord link and see if you can get in now once again this series is just to check in with you guys because I can't do a video every you know every week I'm always driving around so if I, if I find anything interesting, I'm going to show it to you. Look at this guy. I'm going like 60 miles an hour and so is he. That freaking thing is crazy. Look at that. Jesus. Crap, that thing was all over. That was meant for going through cornfields and stuff. That guy was going like 60 miles an hour. But it's better than the last guy. Same type of rig going like three miles an hour. I couldn't get around it for like 15 minutes. It's so like a one lane road. Well, I appreciate you joining me on this new series and I hope the information is going to be helpful to some of you guys. Oh, check this out guys. Check this out. Check this out. Thing kicks butt. Look at that. I think that's a 56. You can spend a whole ton of money on that and then sell it for a lot less than you put into it. So let's go. All right, guys. So just a little change of plans here. I was going to actually include all the different things that you need to, you know, just to get started in wiring on this video, but. Last night I'm sitting there editing and the video is like giant. It's and, and I'm cutting and cutting and cutting and I don't want to be cutting out information on you. So I'm just going to have to do this in two separate videos. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up the Road Rage one. And then just a little bit later tonight, uh, work on editing or finish editing the stuff that you're going to need in order to start wiring up your motion sim. <laughs> it's a lot of really good information there, so watch that video too. should be out as soon as I get it done. So I told you I was going to try to answer some of the questions. You guys came up with some really good stuff. So let's, uh, here's the first one from Isaac Christie. So I wrote him back. He, he basically saying he's, he's getting all his tie rods and uh, wiring and all that stuff together. And he's just a little bit concerned about the welding. My biggest worry with the welding is blowing through and making massive holes and gaps. I did a little welding in automotive school, so that may help. You're gonna, on, on this thin metal, we're, you're gonna blow through it. Um, even if you turn your voltage down and your wire speed down, you're still gonna blow through it every now and again. I still do. It's a pain in the butt, but yeah, I mean, you can overcome it, not a problem. All right, next question. Oh, a question from Adam Roberts. Uh, I collected a lot of things to start, but not sure about the motor. I was thinking about using tarp motors off a dump truck. Uh, I can get 50 or 60 to one. Okay, so just my experience, I would, tr I would go with the 60 to one if you can, if it has a decent speed, but you're not gonna know. It's like, I looked at those motors on eBay too, and I was considering uh, the dump truck uh, motors too. And 
Yeah, you just don't know. Um, as long as they're going to be 12 volts, you know they're going to be pretty powerful because they're 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 hauling probably about a you know a 60 pound. It could be wet, a big old tarp over the top of a dump truck. I had that same idea too. So let me know how it goes. I would try to get the 60 to ones. If anybody else has used those, let let me know um, in the comments. Appreciate it. Okay, another motor question from Diesler. Uh, I was going to do your build, but have trouble finding motors. Where can you find motors? Okay, so that's going to depend on what country you're in. Um, if you're in the United States, I had good luck with the uh, the going on eBay and getting the Crab Pop motors. Um, they're 50 to 1. They were like 99 bucks a piece. They're 12 volt. And I've got six of them now, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm sticking by my guns. They're pretty good motors. I really like them. Uh, depends if you're in Australia, you may be able to get those. I think they're Motion Dynamics. I'm not really sure. I kind of mess up that name every now and again. Uh, apparently, they're the bomb. They, they, they're the best that you can get. Um, they're 60 to 1. Basically, with the, with the motors that I have, you can back drive them, which means... If you got enough force on the lever with the power off, you can push down on the lever, which, you know, your your rig is going to settle just because of the weight. With the 60 to 1s, uh, 60 to 1 ratio, apparently you can't. Go look on xsimulator.net. That would be the best place that, that I would think. Um, those guys, I mean, they've been doing it for a long time, and they, they seem to have uh, just just gobs of information out there on it all right so next comment slash question jonathan hey dave uh this is what i'm looking for it's, um looking at a lot of your older videos i need some help with the programming sim tools and all that i'm a bit lost um maybe how to set the 180 degree pot, hall effect pot too okay so yes i'm gonna be doing um videos on that to those specific they're coming up basically in this in in the series that i'm doing with the compact sim i'm going to be running over uh, all of those things each in an individual video so you'll be able to follow along and just I'm, I'm trying not to gloss over any any information at all um so they're going to be a little bit longer because i'm not going to just there's no point in making a video that you're trying to show somebody how to do something if you just whiz through it. Uh, I don't like those videos myself, and I'm guilty as anybody for, you know, not just not doing everything that you can um, to get that information, the specific things that, that you may just think, oh, you know, I do this a million times. I don't need to talk about wiring. I don't need to talk about soldering. I don't need to, because you know, I'm thinking that I know how to do it, and it's just, it's, yeah. Anyway, so I'm going to be going over those things uh, on how to set up the, the Hall Effect, how to do SIM tools, how to get the programming into the Arduino, how to connect SIM tools and the Arduino, um, how to do SMC3, all that stuff. So stay tuned. It's coming up. Uh, this is a good question from made in dk1 why did you use 12 volts instead of 24 uh basically because i went on xsimulator.net when i was before i built anything i just started reading around and i read so much stuff that i go well you know 12 volt i could just use a truck battery a car battery nice and simple and if everything um, you know, if it just turns into a steaming pile of crap and I lose a bunch of money, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. I didn't want to try to do converters or two batteries and make things complicated or more complicated. So I'm just trying to keep it simple. And basically that's how I ended up in 12 volts. Now I can see the benefit for going higher voltage. So the more voltage, the more force or punch that you probably are going to get. Now, I'm going to look into that, but not right away. Um, I did do that series on 24 volt um, with the, the converters when the seat mover thing. So you can watch that. I just, I'm stuck right now. I got six 12 volt motors and uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to be using right now. We're getting down to the end of the questions. I hope this is helping some guys out. Eventually, it may help out everybody. 
that's uh, looking for this kind of stuff. So, hey, Dave, um, does the difference in the angle, the connecting rods from the base platform to the seat mover make? I've got some IBT2s and they seem to cut out under constant load. Uh, so the rods are about seven degrees. Now, I'm not really sure if he means seven degrees like this or or what, but I, I would assume he's, he's talking seven degrees here. The further back you are and the higher up on the back of the seat or the platform, the longer the lever is going to be. So it's going to be easier to push the 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 chair around or the frame around if you're up high on it and you're coming in from um you know a a, a better angle so maybe seven degrees i i kind of when i answered the question i was like you know what kind of power supply are you using maybe that's what's dropping out uh, i told him i'm using a battery um and i've not had any of my ibt's cut out but anyway, he said, no, he's using uh, two 24 1,000 watts at 42 amps. And he has a fan pointing on the fence. So it's important that you have a fan. And we're going to go over all that stuff. We're going to be actually installing a fan on the, on the box that we're going to make. Getting down to the end here, Oliver F., will you do SimTools version 2 setup? Yes, of course. Um, that's what I use. I use SimTools version 2. Now, they just came out with version 3. I haven't used it yet. I plan to, but right now I'm sticking to what I know, which is SimTools 2. So, yes. Answer is yes. All right, from random login. Okay, so he told me don't drive around with the phone, blah, blah, blah. And... I'm on a safe, big road, and I'm not even looking at the phone when I'm, I mean, that's why I put those big glasses on, so you can't see me looking at the road and not the phone. The question is, you got pitch, roll, and traction loss. If you put the whole thing on a pl some type of platform and have it move up and down, would it be the fourth degree of freedom? or shift it backwards. So yeah, so if, if you're on a sliding platform, it's gonna be a lot easier to move that amount of weight. Okay, so I, I weigh like maybe 200 pounds. Um, you got 200 there, plus all the metal and all that stuff. So we're way into the 300 plus having to move that amount of weight. And not just talking about the top chair or the, the top frame, I'm talking about the top frame, the mid frame, the motors, and the bottom frame that it rides on. Now, there's a company that um, in the UK that I think they're called Lowrider. They make a sliding platform that they put all their motion stuff on it and they just slide the platform back and forth to help with the surge effect. Okay, so forward and backwards, accelerating, braking, surge. Okay, so that'd be, that'd be the simplest way to do it. Um, and you can probably get away with a a lot smaller motor but if you're going to try to lift the whole thing i just yeah man that's just a lot of freaking weight you if you had a big long lever or something that you know some kind of a thing where you could you know you could do it but ah gosh it's a lot of weight a lot of weight all right, let's see if there's... Oh, no, that's it. That's it for questions. Thanks for checking in on Road Rage. I hope some of this stuff uh, allows you guys to know that I'm not just going to go away and not make videos. Uh, they may not be that great right now, but it is what it is. All right, Dave out. Ciao.